गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी टुडे आई विल टेक लेक्चर ऑन पेरेंटल मेडिसिन आई एम डॉक्टर आशीष यादव पी एच ओ डी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पेरेंटोलॉजी फ्रॉम महात्मा गांधी डेंटल कॉलेज इन जयपुर ऑफन बेकर इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी सिक्स डिफाइंड पेरेंटल मेडिसिन एज अ रेपिडली एमर्जिंग ब्रांच ऑफ पेरेंटोलॉजी फोकसिंग ऑन द वेल्थ ऑफ न्यू डेटा स्टेब्लिशिंग अ स्ट्रॉन्ग रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन पेरेंटल हेल्थ और डिजीज एंड सिस्टमिक हेल्थ और डिजीज और इट्स अ ब्रांच ऑफ पेरेंटोलॉजी कंसर्न विद पेरेंटल डिजीज एंड इट्स अफेक्ट्स ऑन वेरियस सिस्टमिक ऑर्गन्स दिस स्टेब्लिशेज अ टू वे रिलेशनशिप डेट इज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ओरल इन्फेक्शन ऑन सिस्टमिक हेल्थ एंड वाइस वर्सा सो इफ वी गो थ्रू द हाइपोथिस इट सेज इट इज मेनली बिकॉज ऑफ एक्सटेंसिव माइक्रोवेल प्लाक क्रॉनिक नेचर ऑफ द डिजीज एंड एक्जुबरेंट लोकल एंड सिस्टमिक होस्ट रिस्पॉन्स to the microbial assault going back to the history in ancient civilization hippocrates described a patient of rheumatism whose arthritis was cured by extraction of the tooth roman physician in 166201 ad they said head is the source of all ills in 1768 thomas birdmore in his book treatise on the disorders and deformities of the teeth and gums said that the relation between teeth and the entire body so in modern times they have said miller a dentist working with kosh published an article titled the human mouth as a focus of infection he said bacterial infection can produce a metastatic abscess thus periodontal disease tonsils and uterus form the foci of infection in 1900 william hunter said oral sepsis as a cause of disease and in 1902 colliger suggested better no teeth than septic ones grossi and others have suggested that effective control of periodontal infection in diabetic patient reduces the level of advanced gly glycation end product in the serum so it is one of the flow chart which shows the bidirectional relationship between diabetes mellitus and periodontal disease as we know Periodontal infection is caused by gram negative bacteria which increases insulin resistance and it worsens the glycemic control but when we are doing periodontal therapy that is when we are doing periodontal treatment it decreases inflammatory load which improves insulin sensitivity and finally it improves glycemic control so it is one of the ideal example of bidirectional relationship coming to preterm low birth weight and periodontal disease so what is preterm as we know normal gestation time is for 40 weeks so birth at lesser than 37 weeks is called preterm delivery and what is low birth weight according to international definition adopted in 1976 birth weight less than 2500 g or 2.5 kg is termed as low birth weight the causes the main causes are maternal age less than 17 or greater than 34 years low socio economic status inadequate prenatal care drug abuse malnutrition alcohol and tobacco use diabetes genito urinary tract infections and hypertension and multiple pregnancies so in spite of this wide range of respect risk factors about 25% of preterm low birth weight cases remain unexplained so this has motivated further research into this relationship and also surviving infants are at increased risk of developing respiratory disease or distress syndrome anemia jaundice mental retardation cerebral palsy impaired sight and hearing intracranial hemorrhage malnutrition congestive heart failure epilepsy and also learning disabilities and impaired lung function spread to the amnion why hematogenous spread it is one of the hypothesis and it has been established also in 1993 hill cultured bacteria from the amniotic fluid and found high levels of fusobacterium nucleatum interleukin 1 and tumor tumor necrosis factor can cross the hu human fetal membrane it was studied by kent in 1994 thus periodontal disease could be a significant and independent risk factor for preterm low birth weight delivery 18% of preterm low birth weight cases are possibly due to periodontal disease which represents 45000 cases each year which is quite remarkable 
findings being that all pregnant women should be given a comprehensive parental evaluation and all active parental lesions should be treated and controlled. This is the flow chart showing the base, basic mechanism which interrelate parental disease with preterm labor. So, whenever there is a bacterial infection, bacteria and their products are released in amnion cavity. There is an inflammatory response with cytokine production and there is an increased amniotic prostaglandin production that is PGA2 which leads to premature rupture of membrane and finally preterm labor. Parental disease and respiratory disease. Low respiratory infections were the third most lower means that lower respiratory tract what I mean were the third most common cause of death by 1990 that is causing more than 4.3 million death. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease was the sixth leading cause of mortality that is causing 2.2 million deaths. Harvard it is the data from the Harvard School of Public Health. Potter and colleagues in 1968 showed that infected teeth were present in 25 percent of 80 patients with potential respiratory pathogens in bronchi as compared to only 7.0 percent of the 80 patient free of pathogens in bronchi. So, this shows that dental plaque plays as a reservoir for potential respiratory pathogens. Dental pathogens such as Porphyromyonas gingivalis produces enzymes such as proteases that alter mucosal surface adhesion receptors for respiratory pathogens such as H. influenza which adhere, colonize and can subsequently be aspirated into the lung to cause infection. P. gingivalis produces enzymes that degrade the salivary molecules that normally form a pellicle on the pathogens which prevents the pathogens from adhering to the mucosal surface. Also oral bacteria produces enzymes that degrade the salivary pellicle on the mucosal surface thereby exposing adhesion receptors for respiratory pathogens. Cytokines from the saliva from inflamed parental tissues upregulate the expression of adhesion receptors on the mucosal surface to promote respiratory pathogen colonization. So, subjects with a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease had more parental attachment loss as compared to the subject without chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and subjects with mean attachment loss that is which is greater than 3 millimeter had a higher risk for COPD as compared to those who has less of mean attachment loss that is less than 3 millimeter and also smoking always modifies this effect because smoking also is a risk factor for periodontal disease. By studying these relationship and by seeing these flow charts we can now understand the relationship between the systemic health and oral health is casual it is causal or causal, but now at least we can say it is not casual, it is causal. Thank you. Thank you very much.